Today we're looking at Hoovervilles. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. The Great Depression of the 1930s was a period of severe economic hard times. Millions of Americans were without work and simply trying to get by. The economic depression had been brought on by years of overspending and borrowing money during the 1920s. Millions of Americans had bought homes and filled them with furnishings and modern appliances, all using credit to finance their purchases. When the stock market crashed in October of 1929, millions found their loans were being called in, and at the same time, businesses were cutting back and letting go of workers. Suddenly, hundreds of thousands of Americans found themselves unable to make payments on their homes and without work. It is estimated that between 1930 to 1940, nearly 2 million Americans became homeless. Immediately, they were homeless on every street of larger cities, sleeping on benches, making shelters in alleyways, or living on the sidewalk in front of businesses. Soon, large camps of homeless began to form on the outskirts of cities. These camps began to be called Hoovervilles, named after President Herbert Hoover, who many blame for the poor economic conditions. In the Hoovervilles, the homeless would use anything they could find to build shelters. Shacks built from cardboard, scattered bricks, scraps of wood with tin roofs were all the homeless had. Shelters were commonly simply holes dug in the ground with a sheet of tin over the top of the hole. Many of these camps were made up of a few hundred people living in temporary shelters, but the Hooverville that formed outside of St. Louis, Missouri had as many as 8,000 residents. Most Hoovervilles were very temporary, with the camp popping up and then disappearing within a few months. However, some camps lasted longer. The Hooverville just outside of Seattle, Washington, stood from 1931 until 1941. The residents of these makeshift communities used the term Hoover to describe several elements of homeless life. A Hoover blanket was scraps of newspaper and cardboard used to cover up. A Hoover flag was an empty pocket turned inside out, showing that you had nothing. Hoover leather was cardboard used to replace the soles of shoes. Many times Hoovervilles were built on vacant land outside of cities, usually near a river or creek for water or near soup kitchens where the homeless could get food. Needless to say, the camps were notorious for their unsanitary, dirty conditions. The spread of disease through the camps was common. Although many Hoovervilles were on the outskirts of cities, some were located in the heart of cities. One of the most well-known Hoovervilles was located in the heart of New York City. Located on what is today Central Park's Great Lawn, this homeless camp became known as Hoover Valley, and many shelters were constructed from brick, built by unemployed bricklayers that lived there. Even though the residents of Hoovervilles were homeless, that did not mean they did not work. Many were transient workers moving from place to place following wherever work was available. Some Hoovervilles became so organized that they established their own neighborhoods and even elected mayors to negotiate with city officials. Most cities were tolerant of camps understanding that the economic depression was hitting millions of Americans. On some occasions, camps were forced to break up. For example, the Health Department of Seattle twice forced the Hooverville there to be evacuated and burned due to sanitation concerns. Both times, the Hooverville immediately popped back up and the leaders of the camp negotiated with city officials to allow the camp to remain if certain sanitary policies were observed. Possibly the most dramatic destruction of a Hooverville occurred in Washington, D.C. in June of 1932. Thousands of American veterans that became known as the Bonus Army were in Washington demanding that the government pay them combat bonuses that they were promised for their service. Congress refused to pay, and then President Hoover ordered that the homeless camp they had established be removed. The order to evict the veterans was carried out by General George Patton, who burned the camp and pushed the veterans out using tear gas and tanks. The fallout of this incident reflected very poorly on President Hoover and would lend to his defeat by Franklin Roosevelt in the presidential election of 1932. Eventually, as economic conditions began to improve by the early 1940s, Hoovervilles across the United States began to disappear. But the legacy of Hoovervilles as a symbol of the Great Depression and the terrible conditions Americans endured lives on today in the American experience. So with that, hopefully you learned something 
and thanks for watching.